This tutorial is brought to you by Carl Louis Academy. My name is Wilfred and welcome to the tutorial. So let's begin. Before enabling Hyper-V on Windows 11, and this is also applicable for Windows 10, make sure you meet the requirements. So your Windows 10 or your Windows 11 has to be the professional edition or the enterprise edition. The shoe obviously will have a processor in the computer that supports second level address translation. You need a minimum of four gigabyte of RAM. And then you need a BIOS that supports virtualization. And most modern BIOS on computers already support virtualization. So these are things to keep in mind before you can enable Hyper-V. So the first thing I wanna do is to open run and just type appwrz.cpl and press enter. What I wanna do is to go to the top left and click on turn Windows features on or off. So I'll click that. I'll just click on yes. For Windows feature, I need to make sure to turn on Hyper-V. So for my computer, I already have it enabled, but you will come and just click in this little square right by Hyper-V and click on OK. And it's going to install or enable the Hyper-V role. And then you restart your computer and then you are good to go. So once that is done and you have restarted your computer, the next stage will be to open your Hyper-V manager. So on your computer, you can just search for Hyper-V and you'll see Hyper-V Manager. So you click on that. And you click on Yes for the User Account Control. When your Hyper-V Manager opens, as you can see on my Hyper-V Manager, I already have Windows Server 2022 and Windows 10. For you, you wouldn't have anything yet. It would just be your Hyper-V Manager. So what you want to do is to come to the left, right on our Hyper-V Manager, you will see the name of your computer. So you right click on your computer and you come to new and you click on virtual machine. So you can either do it this way or you could click on action and come to new and go to virtual machine. Or another option is to come to the top right hand corner on the action menu and you click on new and then you see a virtual machine. So once I click on that, the new virtual machine wizard will open. And the next thing I want to do is just to click on next. And then I will put the name of my server. Then the next thing I want to do here is to put the name of my server. So I will just put when server 2k19. And then this is showing me the location on my hard drive that the virtual disks will be stored. So I will keep it to the default. I will click on next. So for the processor, you want to take generation two and you go to next. So for the memory allocation, according to Microsoft hardware requirement, if we are installing server as a core operating system, the minimum memory is 512 megabyte. But if we are installing it as a desktop experience, the minimum hardware requirement for memory is two gigabyte. So I'm just going to reduce this four gigabyte to two gigabyte, which should be 2048. So the next thing I wanna do is to click on next. So for the network configuration, we wanna choose default switch and click next. So I will just keep it to the default hard drive of 127 gigabyte. And this is the location where the virtual hard disk is saved. So this is just the name of the virtual hard disk. So we'll keep it to that. And then we will click on next. And then we'll say install the operating system later. We'll keep it to that and we'll click on next. And then it gives us a summary. And then we click on finish. And then our virtual machine will be created. Once our virtual machine is created, the next thing we want to do is to right click on our virtual machine and go to settings. And then we come to SkyZ controller. We we'll click on that and we'll click on DVD. And then we add a DVD. So click add a DVD. And then I will just click on image path because I already have the image for Windows Server 2019. So and click on browse 2019 image and then click on open. And I'll click on apply and click on OK. So now we have connected the ISO image of Windows Server 2019 to our virtual computer. So the next thing we want to do here is just to right click on this virtual computer and click on start 
so that we can power on the virtual computer. So as you can see on, on the state, it is starting up. So I'm just going to give it some time and let it to start. So when you come down to the bottom, I can just double click on this black little square and it will bring up the screen of the server 2019. So we'll give it some time and allow it to boot up. All right, so we have come to the installation screen of our Windows Server 2019. So I'm just going to keep the default options here for language. I'm going to keep it to English, United States. For time and currency format, I'm going to keep it to English, United States. And for keyboard, I'm going to keep it to US. But make sure to change these parameters as per your location and requirements. So I'm just going to click on Next, and I will click on Install. Now at this next screen, we have the option to pick which edition of Windows Server 2019 that we want to install. We have two options. We have the standard edition and we have the data center edition. And both editions come in a server core, which is just the command line installation of the operating system. And we have the desktop experience or the fully graphical user interface. Between these two options, I'm just going to go for the data center evaluation desktop experience. In another video, we will install the data center evaluation. But for this case, we're going to choose desktop experience data center evaluation and we click on next. Then we read the end user license agreement. And then after going through it, we accept the license agreement and then we click on next. We have two options to add or upgrade. This is for where you have an existing operating system or to perform a new installation. For our case, it's a new installation. So we're going to go for the second option, custom install Windows on it events. So we click on the second option and then it brings us to where we have our hard drive. And then we're just going to keep it to that one hard drive and then we'll just click on new. And then you can just click on apply and it's going to tell you that Windows will automatically create some system partition. And then you click on OK. And I did this on purpose so that you can see the other system partitions that Windows will automatically create. Or else at this place, instead of clicking on New, I could have just clicked on Next and it's going to do everything in the background. But I wanted you to see what happens when you click on Next. So when you click on Next, it's as if you click on New. What it does is the Windows automatically creates some partitions that are required by the Windows operating system that we have the recovery partition. We have a system partition and we have a reserve partition. And then we have the main partition, which is where the operating system will be installed. So make sure that this primary partition is highlighted and click on next so that the operating system can be installed on that partition. So I will click on next. So the installation of Windows Server 2019 has begun. So I'm going to pause my video, allow it to install. And once that is done, we will come and complete our setup of Windows Server 2019. All right, so we can see that the installation of the server 2019 has completed. So the computer is just going to restart. So we're just going to allow it to restart or we can click on restart now. So once our server 2019 restarts after installation, we have the option to set up or use up password for our administrator account. So that's the default account that is created for us by Windows. So we can just set up a password for that. So I'm just going to set up a password. And then I'm going to re-enter that password. And after doing that, I will just click on finish in the bottom right-hand corner. So I'll click on finish. And then it's going to finish and then I can just click on connect. So just because I click on connect, the screen is kind of small. So I'll just come up right below the help and click on basic section to help it to enlarge a little bit. Okay, this is much better. So now I can just log into my computer by pressing Control or Delete on my keyboard. But because this is a virtual computer, if I press Control or Delete, it's going to trigger Control or Delete on my host computer, which is my laptop. So I'm just going to come up to Action and then click on 
control or delete and it's going to do that and then i can just put in the password and i press enter or i can click the little arrow to log in so because this is the first time that i'm logging in with the administrator account it's going to take a while to create the profile so there you go it has created the profile for that user and then it's because i turn up of my computer that's why it's bringing this option so i'm just going to click on cancel and i'll give it a few seconds and allow the windows server dashboard manager to open up and as well as the windows admin center so i will just click this notification for the admin center and this is our server manager dashboard so as you can see we have successfully installed windows server on the 19. in our next video we're going to do post installation configuration of server 2019 and then in this series of videos we're going to take you through step-by-step -step different configuration and setup that you can perform with windows server 2019. so make sure to like this video on linkedin and leave a comment in the comment section down below and make sure to share it with someone who will find it useful invite others to be a part of this microsoft user group ghana and follow the tutorial and learn something new but this video was done by wilfred andrew delame from the call Louis academy it is to be used exclusively for the microsoft user group ghana take care and i will see you in the very next video bye